Guys, this is Kyle with Lone Peak. Uh, happy Friday to all of you. Uh, I got some cool news. Uh, sorry, I've been posting a lot lately. I've had my head down working on design and I have design lock on the frame of the camper, which is our longest lead time uh, component. It's all the aluminum extrudes. So uh, I'm pretty stoked about that. I already got those sent off to our extrusion vendor. Um, and two cool things to note with that is that um, our extrusion vendor is actually in Utah now. Uh, it was, all the, the prototype extrusion parts were made in India. Uh, we have moved to a Utah vendor primarily just for lead time because it's going to be a lot faster to ship and also a lot faster to produce and keep that stateside. So uh, the cool thing to note is that the frame is actually a lot lighter than it was before, uh, about 30% lighter. And uh, it's actually more rigid uh, just thanks to the, the design of it. Um, the goal is to get the frame under 150 pounds, and that's just the frame. That's not any of the accessories or the panels or the windows or the tent or the bed or bed platform. Uh, those are the main components that add weight. But just the frame is 150, which is huge. Um, let me see, I got some notes here. So uh, the tent, we also made some changes to how the tent mounts. We did some uh, wet weather testing and basically just sprayed this thing down with a hose continually um, on one of the sides uh, before we had some rain channels that would channel out the water and those didn't work very well. So let me show you a little section view here of the new design. Um, so this is the lower extrude. This bears most of the weight. Uh, the tent will basically mount in between these two spots using all the grommets. There are 80 grommets to hold the tent on. It's kind of crazy. It's a little overkill. Um, but, uh, each of those will bear a ton of load and make this thing super strong. So let me go back. I lost my view here. So the tent on the bottom mounts here. So any water will actually route out down here when the tent is open and the tent on the upper mounts to this channel here. Uh, so it has a giant lip here for any water on the top to flow down. So that's one big change that we're making to how the tent mounts uh, to make sure this thing is super waterproof. Um, it's probably a couple weeks ago now. I posted a video of uh, some changes we're making to the tent. So we're adding a condensation vent. Uh, we're also lowering uh, the actual, the apex of the, the, the uh, zipper doors to make it a lot easier because it was super high up here. Uh, we're changing the angle of the actual tent so that snow and rain will fall off of this thing. Uh, and then we're also adding, I haven't designed it yet, but we're adding a, um, or we're redesigning the tensioning bar that adds tension onto this and supports this front feature. So I'll post more stuff on that. But one other cool thing, uh, based on some feedback from you guys, uh, we did some testing with a diesel heater, and uh, some of you guys said to have a, a closed loop system, which I think is brilliant. Um, we were able to get the tent up to about 55 degrees when it was about six degrees out, but the foot box was actually pretty cold. And so we're gonna add a zipper here on the tent so that you'll actually be able to put your air inlet uh, where it's sucking air from the cold box of the tent, uh, which will be a lot warmer than six degrees. Um, you know, it's probably closer to 40 degrees inside the tent when it's 55 up here. But what it'll do is actually create airflow. So if you have the heating and cooling vent, it will pump in air uh, towards the rear upper part of the panel and it will suck air from the foot box. So it should create some cool airflow because uh, most of the air actually just goes up to the top of the tent. So. Uh, let me get back to my notes. Um, let's see here. So we're also changing the, the rear clamp and, and how this thing actually um, secures itself. So before we had a nifty machined part that, that nested inside of these uh, rear end blocks. Uh, it was cool, but it is not gonna be a good idea for production with tolerances. Uh, we had to jerry-rig that thing a ton to get it to close. And so we're going with, um, it's a little more brutish, but it's, it's a solid stainless steel. It'll be black coated clamp. It can clamp uh, up to like 800 pounds of force we've calculated. You won't need it, 
uh, but it's beefy. Um, really, we're trying to design everything with the thought of warranty claims in the future. We want all of this to be perfect. We have a lifetime warranty on this thing, and so it needs to be serviceable, and really, it just needs to be perfect from the get-go. So this will allow you to clamp down if you have extra bedding inside. We do have about half an inch of room in between the roof and the um, the bed, so you can have bedding inside, but this will allow you even more clamping force. Um, talking about, let's see here, which, oh, hold on. Talking about serviceability, one big thing I discovered yesterday, so if you look at a side profile of uh, this is the rear extrude. Um, these are our basically diffusion brackets or covers for our LED strip. LED strip mounts in here. So if you're ordering the, the 12 volt uh, and lighting kit, um, you'll basically get LEDs inside of here and the cover before they slid in. And so if there was ever a service issue with the actual LED strip, let's say it burns out in the next five or 10 years, uh, which is a is a possibility, we would actually have to take the entire rear of the camper apart just to slide out the cover. Uh, it's a pretty bad design, honestly. So I'm glad I caught that. And these will actually just snap into place. So it's very easy to service in the future. Um, again, you know, we're trying to uh, to build this in such a way that it's easily repairable uh, if anything does happen in the future. Let's see what else I got in my notes here. Um, okay, so on the prototype, we we actually held um, the door panels on with just 3M VHB tape, which uh, is pretty awesome stuff. It held well, but one of the, the, the panels, uh, I don't know if you guys saw it in person, one of the panels was actually delaminating, um, not the panel itself, but it was the, the tape was, was coming undone. So we're switching to, we're still gonna put tape on this top part, this 3M VHB creates a, a amazing waterproof seal, but we're backing it up with rivets. So um, it will change the look of the door a little bit because we all have rivets on there, but we're going with flush head rivets. So it'll all be a cool flush look and they'll be black as well. So hopefully they don't stick out too much, um, but this is just kind of a sketch of where the different rivets will go on one half of the panel. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so one cool thing, um, we still got to prototype this. It was kind of a pain to close the doors from the inside of the camper. Um, and so I would basically just grab this part of the lock mechanism. Um, we're adding a little piece that actually acts as a back plate for, for mounting this, uh, this latch. And this will allow you to grab onto this top edge so you can close the door easily. And these holes will actually, will have a little um, a cable that goes through here onto these, um, I don't know, these arms, I guess, with a loop on the top. And that will allow you just to pull and that will unlock the camper from the inside. Before I was basically just holding onto this and, um, and close, you know, closing it manually uh, to open up from the inside. So. That's a fun little thing. Um, sorry if this is long winning guys. I'm just trying to give you a big rundown of everything. Okay, so one other thing, the hinges before were made from a aluminum extrude. And uh, I mean, it's super strong, but the problem is you have aluminum on aluminum. If you know anything about coefficients of, uh, of friction, aluminum is, uh, is not slippery. It's actually has a lot of uh, frictional resistance if if um, if you're familiar with that. So we are switching to something called UHMWPE. Um, longhand, that's ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Uh, it just means it's a heavy plastic, but it has a self lubricating um, capability. So it'll be great for these hinges. Uh, and it also has a UV uh, resistant agent when it's extruded so that these things will last a ton of time, um, a long time. Um, the windows in one of my previous uh, posts would scratch very easily. So we're actually adding a chemically bonded, it's a sprayed on coating that is then baked uh, to create an, uh, basically a abrasion resistant layer on both sides. Uh, the outside is a little bit thicker uh, just so it can 
endure a little bit more harshness from uh, from the weather. And then we also are adding a UV uh, additive to that as well so that the, um, the acrylic won't fade over time because the back window is going to be uh, tinted a little bit. The front will be clear so you can see through easily. Uh, one other thing, I'm trying to reduce weight on this as much as possible. So the roof panel, uh, we are making it a little bit thinner and then we're also making the aluminum skin on the, the panel a little bit thinner. Um, and all that is just to reduce the moment of inertia, to lower it uh, and to reduce the weight on the roof. And because of that, we're gonna actually add a little bit more thickness to the aluminum skin on the doors. We're trying to get these as rigid as possible. So we have a, a new bar on the bottom. This is much thicker than before to stabilize the door. But then the way that the, the, the door panels are made is you have aluminum skin uh, surrounding a polyethylene core. And so that aluminum skin is doubling in thickness, which will make the doors even more rigid than they were before. Uh, let's see here. One other cool thing is that these internal bars that create a structure for the cab uh, panel and window to mount to now have our, we're calling it mod track channel. Uh, so it's a modular track you can mount really anything to. And so um, you can mount a Molly panel that we'll have available to these tracks very easily or anything else really. Um, what else? Okay, and then um, let's go back to this other section view here. Um, this is the front hinge mechanism. This now blocks water from front entry, which before it was, um, it didn't do this. We didn't have this, this interference lip here. So if you're going down the highway, you'll get zero water intrusion from the front. So anyway, um, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I, I know I haven't um, made a post in a while, so try to make up for it with a lot of detail here for you guys to see what I've been working on. Uh, but this is a big moment. We have uh, design lock on the extrudes, which is a big deal. Uh, next up, I'll be working on a lot more of the, uh, the accessories, how the overhang is going to be tensioned better will probably be one of the primary things um, and then also uh, redesigning the, the hinge mechanism for the bed. Um, those are probably the next things we'll be working on next week. So have a good weekend, guys. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.